I wanted to make a video on some questions I've been asked before I drop this cap again. Um, what's the difference between doing a boundary GPS and with the total station? I, I just did a video um, the other day, but I, I've done them in the past and or posted things on Facebook about, you know, doing a boundary. And I, I, I just say, you know, beautiful sunny day in Southern California, doing a boundary. And someone will make a con comment about uh, me using GPS and saying, you know, why aren't you using a total station? Um, you know, GPS is, is shit or whatever. I, uh, I don't understand the bias. And I'm trying to make sure that, is this bias personal or is it just um, people are just, how can I say, um, you know, if, if the jobs are flat and you can see between points and they don't see a reason to use GPS because using a total station is fine, go with total station. To me, if the equipment is all new and everything's calibrated and um, procedures are being followed, there's no difference between the result that you're going to get, in my opinion. But in Southern California, that's where, um, where I work, we have very busy intersections and, um, uh, and a lot of our counties and cities require us to, to locate um, GPS points for a basis of bearing. And so if they're using GPS, you know, we're going to tie into that for, uh, or with uh, GPS. So I'm trying to make sure that these people here that are angry at, um, there we go, angry at, a, oh, there we go, there we go, angry at a GPS is, I don't know, maybe just because they don't understand it or they don't have the office people that can, that can process the work or they don't invest in uh, GPS equipment. So like us, we do a lot of airport work and I think that's how you spell LIDAR. We do a lot of airport work and we have to do 25 foot grids on um, runways and taxiways and stuff like that a lot of times. To us, LIDAR would be the best way to do it. But our clients um, aren't set up to take this information. So we're left with doing, doing it with a um, total station or with a GPS with a 25 foot grid. So back to, um, back to a boundary. This is the way I try to explain um, it to our new hires. And, and we're, we're a very small company. So we have a, um, we have a boundary that we just did. Uh, these are just made up numbers. And the original boundary was, or the most current parcel maps we have are actually from the 1800s and 1960s. So in 1960, this boundary or this um, parcel map with all the information was probably done with a uh, T-16, a wild T-16 or something like it, and uh, probably pulling a 300-foot uh, metal chain. And anyone who remembers how that is done, you know, you would turn angles normally. The, the instrument was probably a 20-second gun. When you're measuring, um, you know, 500 feet, you don't care about curvature of the earth, but you care about, you know, um, things like temperature and, um, you know, making sure that it, that's your level. So you got to have a hand level and plumb bobs and both people need to know how, um, how to use the equipment. And then you had this, um, this, uh, um, spring thing that measured, um, uh, pounds per pole. So, this boundary, I have no doubt, was set very well with the equipment they had in the 1960s. I started in 1987. So let's say I come over out here in 1987. Set up here. Um, this time we're probably still using a T16 or a, or a T1. Wrapping our four to six angles and then shooting a dis distance. Now we have a um, distance meter, top mount distance meter, and 
we should get something different here because we're using two different technologies. And in my eyes, we're not trying to prove this guy right. We're trying to close a geometric shape, make sure our angle, angles close, our traverse closes, and um, then it's up to the office to file the file the necessarily uh, necessary um, you know maps parcel map and um, you know deal with the city and the county and we normally don't call things off unless they're really off but you know we accept monuments and think about this way a monument is nothing more than a representation they have a nail there and a tag um, is nothing more than a representation of where that point is supposed to be so there's a lot of human error you know, I'm not saying, you know, tense and stuff like that, but, you know, there is there is human error. And then if you're going 27 years later, now there's different technology. So, let's say this boundary gets updated, a new parcel map. Now, we come out in 2023, and now we have total stations that are robotic, I don't know anybody who still um, manually turns angles. So let's just say total station, robotic. You got your uh, your setup over here. You got a back side over here. You got a four side over here. And you let it collect angles. Boom, 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 boom. You get an average. Shoot this a few times. Shoot that a few times. And now you have your um, you have your distances. Now this isn't a problem, but if you use a a um, instrument, all of these points are working together because you have your distance that is going to determine your in and out and your angle that's going to determine your, let's just say left and right. So as you come around, traverse around with the instrument and you get all your angles, angle right, angle left, don't really matter. You know, then the, with the formula, n minus 2 times 180. So the number of sides, minus 2 times 180, will give you the interior angles. So this is a squarish thing, so you know it's going to be 360. You are not going to close at exactly 360. It just doesn't happen. So, you know, there is a tolerance that, that you can have. And same with the distances. So when you come back in and close you know what if you uh what you know your northing is um 300s and your easting is um i don't know we'll just say uh 400s and your angle is uh 359 59 um 50 or something i don't even know if that's even acceptable but so there's adjustments made, just like in the 1960s, adjustments are gonna be made and this is gonna fit and you're gonna take this shape and you're gonna overlay it on your AutoCAD drawing of the, of the 1987 parcel map and you're gonna twist it around and, or the office is gonna twist it around, they're gonna accept this line and, and make notes about that line. But as long as your stuff closes, then it, to me, it gets pushed off to the office. Our objective is to make sure that our stuff closes. Now, when it comes to GPS, as I understand it, every point is going to stand alone. So, when we locate this point here, we we locate it for 30 seconds, one second intervals. So, every second for 30 seconds takes a reading. State plane coordinate. Boom, 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 boom. 30 seconds, state plane coordinate. Same thing, same thing. So there are no angles or distances involved. One doesn't have anything with, anything to do with two because it's located. Everything stand on its stands on its own. So then you know you can inverse between one and two. You can check it to the parcel map. You can see you know um, how you're fitting that. As long as you realize that, um, like us, we shoot everything in grid and then it gets converted to ground. So. You know, but you're going to be in the ballpark. Um, and then we go around the second, we go around a second time and shoot it again as an average of the first and second. 
And, you know, if there's a discrepancy, just like, you know, you can have a bad shot um, with a total station, you can have a bad shot with GPS. So that's why we shoot it twice to make sure. And it's the same thing. Shoot it for 30, it'll average both shots, and you move forward. And then in the office, you know, that's, again, where they convert it from grid to ground, and they'll take this shape, and they'll make it fit the um, parcel map on, uh, on, on, the, on AutoCAD, and it's, it's the exact same thing, just a different method. So instead of, you know, checking your angle back and forth, you're averaging shots. You know, and you can shoot this thing as many times as you want. You can shoot it three, four, five, six times. You can shoot it for longer or whatever. But um, why I would prefer GPS over a total station, one thing is our, our crews have gotten smaller. We don't have uh, three-man crews anymore. I, I work by myself or maybe with one other person at times. If we're out in the street, um, this only takes a, GPU, a GPS unit and a, and a bipod. We'll put a base out, you know, out in the property somewhere. And with the total station, you need the total station. You need a um, set of legs, tri-brack, prism, set of legs, tri-brack, prism. So you got three sets of legs. You have traffic. You have, um, you know, depending on the temperature and everything outside, you know, asphalt sink, you know, the, the legs move. To me, you have three separate things that can cause error, and I'm a realist. I know you know it's not that much, but you have three things that can cause error, whereas GPS, you just have the one. And you know, back in the day, you know, you had to have like five satellites available. Most of the time, uh, we we're doing work at in the evening when the satellites were available, and uh, it'd be 45 minutes to you know well over an hour each reading. You know, we're talk I'm talking you know back in the um, early 90s. Now, you know, we're getting great results with just 30 seconds shot twice, and so I would say. I would expect to get the same results, either GPS or total station, as long as everything is set up great, where you know bubbles are checked before you go out, um, you know temperatures change, pressures change inside the total station uh, settings, um, you know ev everything being equal, both both ways obviously are are, are acceptable. I would rather use GPS because I just think it's safer, it's um, faster, and to get the same results. And again, kind of like with LiDAR, you know, if your company's not set up for this, then yeah, obviously total station. But um, I hope you're using a total station with, uh, with like a data collector and uh, stuff like that. I hope you're still not turning angles manually. But if you are, you know, um, God bless you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just let me know what you think. But you know, so people bring up like that GPS has different tolerances than total station, this, that, and the other. If your main, if your objective is to close this shape, I'm not. When I do a boundary, I'm not trying to match another guy's work. That other guy could have been back in the 1960s using a totally different instrument. We're just trying to verify the placement of that property and to make sure that our um, boundary closes. Because let's say we didn't have this point here, but we had a point way out here with GPS, obviously, or you know, you can locate and you can extend that line out same thing if you had to go out further so you had to push out a line here you found some property corners that could establish this line and you came out that distance and you can verify that line that way you know there's a ton of different ways to close this to verify this with both total station and gps but i'd much rather prefer that right there so that's it. Let me know what you think. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm right. Um, 
But I think the difference or the hang up, I think it's more uh, personal than it is uh, professional. Survey out.